First of all, general information about Rwanda. It's a small country. It's actually the smallest landlocked country in Africa. Um, and also just very forward thinking, surprisingly kind of first world. Um, the way that they handled, handled the pandemic, how they've reacted to the COVID reaction um, with getting tourists back. Um, because we all know for Rwanda, tourism is one of their biggest incomes and they treasure it. So I'm very proud of the way that this beautiful little country handled um, the kind of comeback to tourism to Rwanda. So how to get there, I suppose that's the most frequently asked question. Very easy, Kigali is the capital city from um, in Rwanda and also flights would go usually from Europe. So that's the best way that we would recommend any North American clients arriving into Kigali. Air France, Qatar Airways, Turkish Airlines, Brussels, etc. Alternatively, there's flights from South Africa, Cape Town and Johannesburg directly into Kigali. Then to the various other destinations, one and only, as always, opens up the most amazing lodges in the best areas in the world. So Gorilla's Nest, a flight from Kigali takes you about 30 minutes with a helicopter, two, two and a half hours with a road transfer. And then to the left from Kigali at the bottom, Nyingwe House, very easy to get there. Also, uh, plus minus an hour flight from Kigali or then a four hour drive. Um, and I think people forget that there's more to Rwanda than just the gorillas and the chimpanzees. So a visit to Akagera National Park is a must. Again, flights is probably best to get there either from Gorilla's Nest or Nyungwe, um, alternatively drives are possible. So the whole of Rwanda, very, very easy to get to um, road-wise, uh, um, including your flights. So best time to visit us, it's one of the, the nicest destinations that I can answer the question to, the best time to visit. It really is an all year round good destination. And a lot of people would say that cannot be, but it literally is true. Um, if you look at the, the, the different temperatures, nothing ever really goes down to below 80 degrees or, or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's that beautiful, perfect in the middle. Um, and you'd see that uh, March, April, May, you get a little bit more rain, but the gorillas are still there. Actually, I have found gorilla trekking to be easier uh, or to find them closer to the lodges during that time. So honestly, any time of the, the year is a good time. Um, and I always would recommend when you fly into Rwanda that you also do a bit of a Kigali city tour just to get the culture, the history and um, pick up the vibe of the city as well. Um, so just as I said again, good time to travel all year round. Lots of things to do and see. Um, within the city, but also we, we often find that people want to experience a little bit more of the culture. It it's, was for a while the, the forgotten country, if you think back about the genocide, and that wasn't that long ago, it was only about 20 years ago, um, and the way that these beautiful people have just risen up and taken the world on and become the shining light of Africa. There's a lot of um, really interesting projects we can, we can also include in your trip. Um, and that would be going to a uh, women's project or moving across to um, kind of education sessions, etc. The Genocide Memorial, a must visit, very close to my heart. It also gives you that background. It's done beautifully. Um, it's a self kind of guided tour. So you can take as much time as you want. But it just, again, it comes back to to the people of this magnificent country and not to be missed. So all in all, Rwanda, um, a great city, uh, sorry, Kigali, great city in Rwanda. You've got fantastic hotels within the destination also. Um, with the COVID measures, we never know if you're gonna have to overnight the night or alternatively on your way out, uh, spend a night in Kigali. But as you can see, some fantastic hotels. Serena, um, we've got some really good, uh, well-known international brands as well, like the Marriott, the Radisson, etc. So lots of um, opportunities and options within Kigali to overnight. As I mentioned before, helicopter transfers. 
a not really great way to see the destination. You kind of really take off and get to see what the destination looked like. Beautiful tea plantations, coffee plantations, lakes, um, etc. Even if you move across to the road transfers, I often find them fascinating because you get to see even more of the countryside, more of the people. The infrastructure is great. I often refer to as Rwanda as the Switzerland of Africa. Beautiful rolling hills, um, magnificent lakes, etc., and just so green. And again, just seeing kind of the locals moving around. Very interesting um, and not to be missed. So Nyungwe National Park, that's really where you would see your chimpanzees. That's where we that's where we focus for the chimpanzee trekking. Um, also fantastic birding. Um, they've got a fantastic canopy walk. Um, that's that's really exciting, not for the faint-hearted, but just the beautiful um, area to see. Um, and also it brings you back to kind of your, your spirit. It's a very kind of humbling experience um, being out in Nyungwe um, in this national park. Volcanoes National Park, that's really where the gorillas would be. And that's where you would do your trekking. Um, so the National Park, as I said, very easy to get to and with a beautiful property like one and only absolutely a must visit. The local culture, just before you start your, your trek, fantastic. I mean, these smiles are real. You, you can't think that these people were and the country with the forgotten people um, and just how happy they are to have you and brings a smile and a tear to my eye whenever I go. Um, the, the warm hospitality is superb. So just to, to talk about the, the actual trek, getting ready for the trek is absolutely part of the excitement. Um, I can never sleep the night before and I've done this a few times. So it's really kind of just getting through that night, making sure you're ready um, and then getting to the, the briefing site. I would highly recommend that you get one of these porters to assist you. Not only are you getting giving back to the community, but they really help you to get up to these uh, gorillas. The gorillas trick throughout the day, they kind of move around. So you will also move around and you would need um, a special kind of trekking guide and equipment list, which we will help you with. Um, because you're not just going through a, a pathway, they literally create um, a, a walk for you to the, the area where the gorillas are. So hiking shoes, vital, uh, trekking gloves, really important. Um, and we will obviously assist you with all of that. Um, once you get to the gorillas, you only get to spend one hour with them, which is probably the, the shortest hour and the most exciting hour of your life. But this is what you would see. And I think a lot of these pictures just speak for themselves. Um, you cannot think that these little creatures are not that far from us. I mean, it's primate, it's that real instinct. Um, and this is a very special picture for me. It's one that I took on my very first hike. And you can just see in these eyes, the, the power, the glory, the strength, the sky sitting there. Um, and the fact that they allow you to get into their territory, um, not on a vehicle, by, by, by foot. You're entering their area, they're allowing you to be part of their troop and their family. A really, really special experience. This is one of my personal favorite pictures. You can see it's me in the front. <laughs> and um, then I'm sitting so close to this uh, silverback and he's just carrying on with his life, not minding me at all. And I literally sat there that day and I felt like Diane Fossey. I was on top of the world, um, no experience could ever beat that. And as I said, I'm African, I'm from South Africa, I've done the migration, I've seen wild animals, it's always been in my blood, but this is one of the most spectacular things and most real things I've ever experienced in my life and would recommend for anybody. On top of that, I think people forget that um, you can also do a safari in Rwanda, they've got the big five, they've got beautiful the Akagera National Park, um, really good accommodations. Unfortunately, we don't have a one and only there, but uh, hopefully that will happen soon. But it just showcases that you can do Rwanda as one destination. Um, so you can do your um, land-based safari. Uh, you can see your zebras, 
antelopes, etc., rhino, you can see elephants, etc. Um, and also the fact that you can do both. You can do a game drive um, on a safari vehicle or then on a river uh, safari, which is also very different and unique um, to do both of those in the same park. Lots of walking safaris, etc. So just an amazing experience to come to remarkable Rwanda and be able to see chimpanzees, gorillas, and these fantastic safari animals and experience the people, the heart and the soul of what this destination and country is about. Excellent. Thank you so much, Yolanda, um, for your incredible introduction to Remarkable Rwanda. Um, I'll start by talking about one and only Nyunga House. Uh, which is our property that's in the southwest of Rwanda. Um, so one and only Nyungwe House is actually located um, in Nyungwe Forest National Park, which is one of the most important sites for biodiversity. As you can see from this stunning photo, um, we've actually, we're actually on a working tea plantation and you can see you've got the backdrop of the rainforest um, um, from your rooms as well. Uh, so that's a map of Rwanda. So as you can see, one and only Nyingwe House is in the southwest, right in Nyingwe Forest National Park. And from Kigali to one and only Nyingwe House, uh, we've got three ways to actually get to the property. So you could either transfer by a um, helicopter. It's a 30 to 45 minute helicopter charter that has incredibly stunning views of the Nyingwe Forest Canopy. Uh, you've got views of Lake Kivu and um, the volcanoes when you're flying into Nyunga, into Nyunga Forest. So you can actually land right on our helipad. Uh, the other way that you can get here is um, by a Rwanda Air. So there's a domestic flight from Kigali International Airport um, daily. And then uh, from, the, from, from the airport to the, to the property, it's a 45 minute drive. And then the third option is um, a scenic um, drive uh, from Kigali to the property. It's a six hour drive, but then you, what you can do is do two cultural stops on your way there. You can actually visit the King's Palace and the Natural History Museum, which are incredibly informative and get to kind of teach you about the history of Rwanda as well. So I'm going to talk about the rooms. Uh, as you can see, the rooms are incredibly stunning. Um, each one of them has a private deck uh, built to blend into nature. Um, you can see that um, from, the, uh, from the pieces of you know, artwork and our furniture, we've worked together with uh, local craftsmen to kind of um, showcase the best of Rwanda, best of Rwandan design. And um, the beautiful thing about these rooms is, is you kind of have an outdoor, indoor living. Um, so wh when you are sat in your room, you can actually see um, from your very own private deck um, the wildlife in the rainforest. Um, Nyungwe House as well, one of the key things that we want to focus on or we have been focusing on is our dining experience and we're very lucky we live in an incredible country that has such fertile soils. Um, so we do, most of our uh, cuisine is farm to table and so most of the produce that we have is either from our chef's garden, which you can do a tour on your own property with our chef or actually from the local community. So most of it is local produce. Um, one of the key things that we do is um, we try and make a menu that's bespoke to each and every one of our clients. So we don't actually have uh, physical menus. Uh, what we do do is we, we make a, an incredible feast for you, um, which changes every night that you're staying with us. As we're in a working tea plantation, one of the activities that we do offer um, is the afternoon tea ceremony or tea tasting. Um, so you can actually go out um, with the local community and pick tea leaves. And then every um, afternoon we'll have um, a tea ceremony with our tea expert and who will kind of talk you through the different types of tea that we have, uh, which people thoroughly enjoy. So tea tasting is part of our complimentary on resort experiences, which we have quite a few of those as well. Um, one of the things that you we have an incredible spa. And as you can see from every um, part of the resort, you actually have stunning views of the rainforest. Um, so what we have done is we've worked with a brand called Africology, it's a renowned uh, South African brand, uh, who have made for us a special treatment uh, with the remedial benefits of tea, um, so which our guests thoroughly enjoy. And as, as we said, it's, it's also about understanding who our guests are and making treat and offering treatments and experiences that are bespoke or tailor-made for their needs at that time. Um, 
so back to our own resort experiences. Um, so on the property, you actually have two on resort experiences per person per day. Um, so these uh, vary. So depending on what you'd like to do, of course, you could, after enjoying the spa, you can actually go out and do a nature walk. So we do it for a nature walk. Uh, we've got archery. I've got spear throwing, which is a Rwandan tradition, which people thoroughly enjoy. Um, you've got nocturnal spotlighting, uh, spotlighting and stargazing. So quite a few activities that you can do. And of course, uh, the nature's boot camp that happens every morning, um, which um, um, is not for everybody, but <laughs> it's, it's quite a fun activity. Um, so you can book any one of these experiences when you are staying with us uh, the night before by 6 p.m. And as I said, all these ex uh, experiences that we do offer on resort are actually complementary and included in the rates. Uh, one of the things that you find about Nyunga Forest National Park, which of course Yolanda uh, sort of spoke about earlier, was really, um, it's a home for, uh, you know, the different 13 primate species that we have. So we have threatened species like the Alphys monkey and the Lewis monkey, which you'll only find in our parts of the world. And as I said earlier, it's really an important site for biodiversity the most important site for biodiversity in, in Rwanda with incredible orchids, exotic, exotic birds and, and butterflies. And one of the best um, sites you find in Rwanda for birding as well. Um, so this photo on here, you have the fantastic chimpanzees. So people assume it's just a chimp tracking. As I said, we, only, we have got 13 primate species. So this includes the colobus monkeys. This you'll see, they do tend to come quite close to the property. So you might from time to time see them while you are on the private deck enjoying your um, glass of wine um, in your room. And as I said, um, a thousand species of creation. So it really is a stunning, stunning property. So I'm going to talk about our other property that just opened last year, uh, the one in Any Gorilla's Nest. Um, so one in Any Gorilla's Nest is our newest property. So we have got two properties in Rwanda. And this one is located up in Volcanoes National Park which is um, Yolanda spoke about Volcanoes National Park. So um, the distance from Kigali to uh, Volcanoes National Park is just a two and a half hour drive, stunning scenic drive. Uh, you can get to us um, by helicopter charter as well. So we have got a helipad and the helipad will actually, will have, you know, helipads at both properties so you can actually connect from one to the other. Um, so it's a 20 to 25 minute helicopter charter, again, with stunning views of the Rwandan countryside and also um, the volcanoes when you are landing onto the property. Um, so same, quite similar to um, Nyungwe House is the size of the property. And uh, so we have got 21 rooms at one and only Gorilla's Nest and this vary from your suites um, all the way to, um, from your uh, lodges all the way to your suites. Uh, and of course, um, one thing that everybody will sort of, when you do come, it's, uh, you, it, it's, it's, it's incredibly um, stunning, the nature that we have on the property, the winding pathways, the exotic birds that we have on the property. So it's, it's, a, it's a stunning property to be on. Um, as we spoke about uh, the suites, this, this, the suites and lodges were actually built to sort of look like the floating of uh, you know, nature and vegetation. And, are incredibly stunning. Um, so same to um, one and only Nyungwe House. So there's a few photos of um, some of our rooms and quite similar to one and only Nyungwe House, we also have two on resort activities uh, that you can have per person per day. Um, so these um, quite fun activities as well. Um, so you have got a, a, a variety of, of activities from coffee tasting to going out into the local community. Um, you can have, you, you can do a nature walk. Uh, there's a cycling on property as well, which people thoroughly enjoy. And of course, we have an incredible club one where you have got a swimming pool, which is heated. I must add, because it does get quite nippy sometimes in the evening. Um, so yeah, so it's a, a heated swimming pool at our club one. And of course, a stunning spa uh, that would, would like for you to indulge, especially after um, gorilla trekking or uh, your golden monkey trekking when you're staying with us. So yes, um, so this, this property as well, um, you have got most of, I, I want to emphasize that most of the rooms, depending even from your lodge type, all the way to your suites as standalone um, sort of um, rooms, uh, which is quite important, especially post COVID. It's for people to understand and be comfortable that, you know, when you are in your room, you still feel that it's an exclusive stay and that you are on your own um, 
in, in, in the rooms as well. You are on your own on the property and you don't feel like there are too many people that are staying on property as well, which is quite nice and people are thoroughly enjoying at the moment. Um, thank you very much. Um, be happy to respond to any questions. Uh, thank you so much, Bonita. So now, as we've mentioned, we will move on to this panel discussion. Here you'll see on the screen the individuals that will be participating in this panel in which we will um, have a little bit of a discussion and hopefully ask a lot of the questions which are coming in heavy on the question and answer. So thank you for that. Um, the first question, I'm going to do this with Craig. Craig, can you explain, um, do the COVID protocols change in how you would build a full Rwanda itinerary? Hi, David. Not really. Um, you require your first test 120 hours before you depart. Your second test is done on arrival. You arrive at um, the airport, you move to your designated hotel, and the Rwandan government have made it super easy. You have the test in the comfort of your hotel, and within 24 hours, you're free to travel. Just by way of example, my son flew in this morning, and from the time he got off the plane to the time he left the terminal building, took in 20 minutes. So it, it really is incredibly fast and efficient. Also, just bear in mind that Rwanda is a little bit of a COVID bubble. Um, the leadership acted very fast and we were one of the first countries to shut our borders. We are um, on the EU green list. And what's also really heartening for me is the government takes testing very seriously. So all our colleagues in the hotel are tested by the government every two weeks to reduce the risk of spreading the virus. That's great, thank you. And in, in that theme with testing, the next question is, is COVID testing required to depart Rwanda? We know for a fact that you needed to come in, but do you need it to leave Rwanda? Yep, you do, that's correct. But most destinations will require a negative test for you to grant entry anyway. So it's a dual action. At Gorilla's Nest, we've um, made the process really easy as well. We have our own doctor on site. So we're doing the test in the resort for you. You just got to bear in mind that the results take between 48 and 24 hours. So you just got to plan accordingly. And um, it's very easy, very quick. And it costs about 150 US dollars. Great, thank you for that, uh, Craig. Now, moving over to Jacques. So Jacques, you recently did a gorilla trek during the pandemic. What aspects of the gorilla trek have changed since COVID? Um, David, you know, um, as Yolanda said, you know, it's it's a live, you know, experience. You know, it's it's amazing. Um, the trains are arriving at the park. They will take your temperature. Um, hand wash stations is available um, all around. So you know, they do take it quite serious. Um, it used to be eight um, guests in a group. Now it's only six. Um, I really enjoy the the smaller groups because um, you know the guides you know interact with you a little bit more. Um, also, there's a distance of 10 meters between you and the gorillas. As you can see, you know, they do move around. Um, we, do, we did try to, to, to keep the distance, but, you know, sometimes we were seven meters, six meters. Um, but the experience is still um, life changing. And, you know, I've done it quite a few times, but still, it's just, I didn't sleep the night before, even on my third track. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 you have to have a mask at all time. They do give you a mask on the track because you can't have a colorful mask. It needs to look um, all the same. Um, so yeah, so a few things um, changed, but the experience is still, still phenomenal. Thank you, Jacques. And we do see that picture there on the screen. That was obviously during your recent track. So you're obviously very, very close to the gorillas and still the same experience that I had pre-COVID. So thank you for sharing that. Now pivoting over to Bonita. Bonita, We've talked a lot about gorilla's nest and of course the uh, mountain gorilla tracking, but you know, as we know, we have Nangwe House and there's where you do the chimpanzee tracking, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, what does the morning of a trek when you are at Nangwe House look like? You know, were you doing the chimp trekking, let's say, versus the gorilla trekking in the other resort? Okay, great. Thank you so much, David. So with the chimp trekking, I think because um, of the sightings, it starts earlier than it would do. It would necessarily like it would do for the gorilla trekking. So we do have a wake up call on the property um, at four a.m. at Wadadoni Nyingwe House. 
and then you come up um, for breakfast at 4.30. So breakfast will have, will sort of include a sandwich, which sort of you have a granola bar, um, some fruits that you can take, unless you can actually take with you, you can actually have um, at the restaurant or take away with you in your backpack. Um, so yeah, so we certainly get you, you know, prepared for your trek. Um, whereas with Gorilla's Nest, it's, it's, it's actually quite a similar experience in the morning in terms of, you know, your packing list and what you're taking with you and the breakfast experience. Uh, but um, with at Gorilla's Nest, the wake up call is actually at 5.30 because um, uh, the trekking is actually slightly later. So yes, so that, that really is the difference in terms of, you know, whether on what you'd actually need we have got things that we do provide um especially for your trekking so we've got gloves we've got rain uh, coat ponchos we've got gaiters we have got in the instance that you um did bring your trekking shoes trekking boots with you we can lend you um trekking boots so for both male and female we can lend you both uh, trekking boots at both properties um so apart from that it's just really the wake up call um breakfast but it's just the times the times uh, difference really at, at both properties because of the time differences in um the start time for the trekking thank you so much thank you and so, Jacques, you know, in talking about the differences between the gorilla and the trim trekking, is there anything really that's that's different? I mean, other than, of course, the primate species that you're looking for? Um, I think, as you said earlier, you know, the trims are a little bit more of an adventure. Um, you do have to work a little bit harder to go and see them. Um, I've seen quite a few guests coming back and it looked like they've been swimming through the mud. Um, but they definitely worked harder to go and see it. And I think that's the, the adventure story that they bring back with them. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you have to work for it. Um, where the gorillas, I think you, you, you do go for long hikes as well, but um, I think for slipping and sliding, then definitely the, um, the chimpanzees are, are a little bit more harder than the, the gorillas. Yeah, no, I, I personally can attest to that. The chimps are quite elusive, but they were so rewarding when we finally got to them and, and, and very funny as well. So thank you for that. Um, so again, you know, you tracked. And so what does a perfect day look for you, for example, in a non-tracking day at either one of the resorts? Um, David, you know, you can um, have a, a lazy day where you can just go straight for a nice yoga class um, or go to one of our unique spas that, that we have. Both of them are so different. Um, at Gorilla's Nest, you can maybe take one of the bikes, as Bonita said, um, or join one of the, the tours that we have with one of our experienced guides. At the Nungwe, you can go archery and spear throwing. Um, here at um, Gorilla's Nest, you can go on a nice bike through the, uh, through the, the gardens, um, or take a tour on with a chef through his um, chef's garden. Um, Gorilla's Nest also has got a lovely area called um, area that we just refurb, and that is Jack Hanna. Um, it's got a really lovely pool table and um, great views of the property as well um, and also some nice board games so on rainy days you can really there's so much to do you know this it, it, it all depends on how you feel if you want to just want to have a lazy day on the sofa or just watch a movie or just explore the grounds anything is possible and as Bonita said we can really take tailor make it to what you would like to do or yeah I completely agree. And behind me is the bar Gorilla's Nest. So that's also a favorite spot for, for many people, which I know. So you could just have a, a good day just enjoying some, some good libations and cocktails. So thank you for that, Jock. Um, now we'll go to Yolanda. You know, there's been a lot of questions about the permits. So are permits ever discounted? You know, we know that permits are $1,500 a day per person for the Gorilla trekking. That's obviously published price. But do you ever go into a discount situation? They do. Um, and this is usually the lowest season, which is kind of November to, to May. And it's a 30% discount for, for one trek. So if you do two, the, the one trek will be discounted um, with 30% and the other trek will still be at a normal price. Um, there is one little um, uh, kind of trick to this is that you have to visit more than one um, lodge in Rwanda, which is not difficult to do and see a little bit more, but then they will apply that. And that's in lower season, as I said. Just with regard to trekking, I always think if you can do true treks, um, because your first trek, you kind of so excited, you are, you don't know, should I take pictures? Should I, what should I do? Um, so 
the second trek is kind of you experiencing it. You you know what to expect. You kind of taking it all in, um, and you living it a little bit more. So, in my humble opinion, two treks is a must. I agree. I agree with you, and that is certainly a trend, specifically with our North American travelers, because you also get an opportunity to see two different families, and so one right. family might have infants or might the other. So. Um, as we know, each one of the gorillas or the chimps have a personality of their own, which is great. Thank you for that. Now, Craig, um, a question for you. Can you choose an easy trek versus a challenging trek? And again, we've talked about if clients should do two days of trekking. So the answer for that is yes. But are there options to kind of do an easier version of that? David, we get asked this question all the time. And the short answer actually is yes, you can. What happens is once you get to the RDB site, they try and put people um, with similar abilities into same groups. So that, that works reasonably well. It's also very important to remember that this is not a zoo. So what happens often is that gorillas are free to move sometimes even across the borders to the DRC. So we've had people chasing the gorillas and then have to come all the way back to find another family. Um, and that, that's what happens when you, you go and you think you're going to go on an easy track and the gorillas move. And likewise, if you think you're going to go on a difficult track, because some young people do ask for, for the more difficult tracks. And again, the gorillas move towards them and it really is a nature experience. There's always three things that I always tell our guests. The most important thing is that they only go as fast as the slowest person. So enjoy the scenery, enjoy the track. Number two is that once you, they, they take you as a group to go and view the gorillas. So they will only, they'll wait for the last person to join up with the rest of the group. And then they'll move you as a group through. So again, there's no rush. And lastly, you're going to only see the gorillas for 60 minutes. So right. the reality is if you rush and you, you run to get up the hill, and, and you, you get there by eight o'clock, by nine o'clock it will be over. If you take a nice leisurely stroll and you get there at 11 o'clock, by 12 o'clock it will be over. So there's no reason to rush, just go and enjoy it, take your time and um, enjoy the moment. I agree, and the scenery is just absolutely spectacular where you see the volcanoes range, you're looking out over the border into the different countries, it's, it's magical. Now, this is something that we also get asked a lot, you know, can people with mobility issues um, partake in um, a track? Definitely yes, no matter how old you are or your fitness level. We have what's commonly referred to as bush helicopters. It is um, a hybrid between a sedan chair and a stretcher. And these are common sites during tracks. You can see um, there's someone there. We've had days where we've had up to 12 guests using um, the bush helicopter. Your second option, and one that we always, always recommend, is no matter your fitness level, is to use a porter. The yes. porters come from the local community, many of them are ex-poachers, and you're literally paying $20 to make use of them. And let me tell you, it is the best $20 you're going to spend in your entire vacation. Really and truthfully, you're supporting the local community. Um, these men are so much more than just um, there to carry your bag. They'll help you up the steep slopes. They'll tell you the best path to follow. And when your shoe gets stuck in the mud, as they do, they'll be the ones to retrieve it for you. Also, just bear in mind, if you don't require the bush helicopter, but you do have a, maybe you've got a problem with your hip or your knee or something like that, a lot of people make use of two porters. And the two porters will then take you on either side and they'll help you up and, and get you through to get to the trek. That is correct. Thank you, Craig. When I remember when I did the trek, many of you that are on this webinar know that I'm, you know, I'm a good day, a, a tall, strong guy, but I, um, I had just one porter with me and I wish I would have had sometimes a second one. Again, just for that security and that stability. So thank you for that. Bonita. Um, you know, you being uh, Rwandan and proud of that, and then, of course, also living in Kigali, um, what is there to do in Kigali? I know I certainly enjoyed my time there, but can you share some of the good things to do there? Thank you so much, David. So I know we talked about um, visiting the Gen uh, Genocide Memorial. I think it's a must um, see as um, 
Yolanda was saying earlier. I think it's important to kind of um, sort of learn about our past and also see, you know, in the last 26 years, how Rwanda has completely transformed and is incredibly progressive. Um, it's, it's a really vibrant city uh, and quite cosmopolitan, actually, which people will actually find that quite surprising. But one of the things that I'll talk about is the fashion. I absolutely love fashion. And we've got some incredible fashion designers um, in Rwanda. And so one of them is called Motions. Um, and what, is, what they've actually done is really... Uh, be inspired by each of our local um, culture and traditions. So Motions um, has a, an incredible store. On a Friday, you can go and have a cocktail, you sip and shop, and um, you see most of this stuff has beading in black and white, which is a part of, you know, our traditional dress. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can actually go shopping on Motions, and there's a lady called uh, Linda who has a store called Otba, so you can buy some interior design. She also has a coffee shop um at odd buses so you can actually have a coffee and do some shopping and then in terms of the cuisine we have quite a few vibrant restaurants um you find because um most rwandans sort of have that belgian um sort of french um be because we're you know we're ex belgian we're an ex belgian colony so the cuisine is quite fun um, and very European, uh, lots of places where you can get good wine and cheese, um, lots of fine dining restaurants as well uh, that you find that have those influences. So quite a few things to do. In the evenings, um, um, we have quite a few sort of uh, bars that you can go to with stunning views. By the way, even in Kigali, you've got stunning views from, you know, wherever you'd be sitting of the city because of the hills. Um, so yeah, so quite a few bars and restaurants and nightclubs for those who fancy to go out later on. But yeah, so quite a few things that you can, there's a really cosmopolitan city, uh, one with great food. Also with the restaurants, we have got specific restu restaurants like Republica that sort of does a very African cuisine cuisine which is a mix of both you know um food from drc and rwanda so yeah so quite a few things that you can do i mean you can't go wrong with dining shopping uh, and and getting out in a night uh, in a night house so yes it's a, it's a fun city no i agree and i know that i had to buy an extra bag with all of the fun things that i bought when i was there so yes, uh, it certainly is. <laughs> a, a shopping mecca and a lot of great and beautiful beautiful um handmade items um now Craig, um, you know, Rwanda, you know, we're talking about, is this also a good destination for families? You know, is this something that you could do as part of a multi-generational trip? No, no, but again, we, we pride ourselves on being so much more than a lodge. We have a fully integrated resort experience. We have a standalone spa that's absolutely stunning. We have a Club One, which has a heated pool, a sauna, a steam room, a plunge pool, a relaxation room, and fully equipped gym. Jim, sorry, Jim. See, it's a type of the evening here. And then um, in addition to that, we've just opened Jack Hanna. And that is absolutely amazing. It has an awesome, fully equipped games room where there's a pool table, there's foosball tables, there's board games like Jacques was saying earlier on. You can come outside. There's um, croquet and ball. If you excite, if you've got a bit more energy, we've got the e-bikes, which are amazing, whether you fit or not fit. They make you look fit, so it's, it's great. So there's, there's tons to do on the resort for an entire family. The nice thing is there's lots of different places where the families can gather and, and spend time and bond. So yeah, from, from that perspective, it really is um, the perfect destination. Just also coming back to your gorilla experience, and I just want to share with you a personal experience. Um, I have two children, a 16-year-old and a 19-year-old. And we went to see the gorillas as a family for the first time. And I came to Rwanda before the family got here. And I specifically said, I do not want to do tracks until my family gets here. And I must tell you, best decision I ever, ever made. We have um, traveled extensively, but the raw emotion that we shared when we came face to face, with those magnificent beasts was just out of this world. And I can tell you now, I'll be long gone but my children will still remember the time they had with their parents in terms of the, the, it was just such a special time. So I would really say that if, if a family is looking to do something to bond and, and something that they're going to remember for a long time, this is the thing to do if you can. 
Thank you for sharing that, Craig. It really does touch the heart, and I do concur with that. So with that, we've wrapped up the panel discussion. I hope that we answered a lot of some questions that people had. I know there's been a lot of activity in that Q&A, so we'll try to get to that. And then we'll take it over back to the North America team with Jennifer and Michael to discuss a little bit about the uh, collection and updates on our health and safety measures. Exactly. Thank you so much, David. So pivoting from Rwanda briefly, uh, we'd like to give you the current status of where we're at with most of our properties around the world. So the good news is that almost all of our properties are open and operating. The only caveat would be that uh, the destinations have various policies. So for our neighbors in Mexico, uh, we have one and only Palmia reopening on October 29th and our brand new resort, one and only Mandarina, opening on November 1st. Um, there are no travel restrictions for getting into uh, Mexico right now. For some of the other destinations like Maldives and Dubai, where we have quite a few properties there, and also uh, in Morocco, there is a PCR test requirement similar to that uh, in Rwanda, which Craig was speaking to earlier. Um, and then there are a few destinations like Desiru Coast, our brand new property in Malaysia, um, Le saint Geron in Mauritius, and Emirates One and Only Wogan Valley in Australia, uh, as well as One and Only Cape Town. All of these destinations are currently closed to the American leisure travelers, but once again, the properties are open and operating, and once the restrictions do get lifted, we look forward to welcoming uh, your clients very soon. So what has One and Only done recently? We have always been a company that uh, we wanted to make it easy to work with. So we've simplified our booking policies uh, over the last few months. So it's, it's very black and white. With Rwanda, it's 25% deposit to get that booking, and then you can cancel up to seven days prior to travel. So if you wanna get that booking in for next summer um, and our, the clients are still a little sensitive about everything going on, they can be confident that uh, shortly before the trip, up to seven days, they are able to cancel and get that deposit back. And for festive, it would be a 45-day cancellation policy. So that's for Rwanda, but for the rest of the collection uh, throughout the entire brand, from now through October of next year, uh, aside from festive, it's just a one-night deposit, and again, cancellation seven days prior. So we're trying to keep things uh, streamlined and very simple. Uh, for many of the resorts for festive in particular, it is a 50% deposit with a 45 day cancellation policy. Thank you, Michael. And moving on to our post COVID health and safety measures, you're gonna find a quite comprehensive um, plan if you go to our website, but just a few things to highlight that you will see across the brand um, in terms of what you'll find is that we've gone completely to a point where you don't have to actually touch menus. You can actually download an app. Everything from guest compendiums in rooms will be available digitally, pre approved pre-arrival information is also sent in advance digitally, as well as very detailed staff training. We practice physical distancing. I think one of the things I always love to share in what we've evolved from the iconic one and only Palmia was the greeting that started with the hand over the heart as a very kind gesture and has evolved to all of our properties across the globe. We also sanitize uh, clients' luggage as they arrive. Protective welcome kits are provided as well thermal camera checks, and we can also provide private temperature checks as well. Another um, initiative that we're quite proud of from the one and only brand site, we've made it very simple, especially for many of the advisors who do not use the GDS. You can simply go to our website and you can actually just book using our booking engine. And there's an area where you can enter your IATA details. We want to really highlight this at this time because with, especially with what we're seeing with many of our resorts, primarily in Mexico, opening with capacity limitations. Right now we're at 40% in Los Cabos, Mexico and 30% in the Riviera Nayarit. When you do have a need, you know, and it's a weekend and you can't reach us because we're all asleep, it's three o'clock in the morning, you can easily go to the website, you can log on, grab that room, put your IATA details in there, and then just drop us a note as well so that we can just double check to make sure that it's all highlighted and noted with your details. 
We're also proud to announce that we are a brand that is channel neutral with so many brands out there that have, um, have not become channel neutral. We actually will provide your consortia amenities regardless of how you book us, whether you go through your preferred tour operator or DMC, all you need to do is drop us a note and we'll happily apply that so that you receive your consortia amenities and more importantly, note you as the advisor on record so we can apply those special touches for your clients that you are sending to us. That's right. And before we leave you, we wanted to give you a little special preview of uh, what's going to be our newest resort, One and Only Mandarina, again, opening November 1st, just 11 days away. Uh, so this property is in Mexico, which again is open um, without the PCR test requirement uh, for the American travelers. So where is Riviera Nayarit? It's about one hour north of Puerto Vallarta Airport. So we're just under that hour and there's a new highway being built uh, that'll be finished in 2021, making it only 30 minutes from Puerto Vallarta. So going along the coast, you'd uh, drive right by the charming villages of Sayulita and San Pacho, uh, really charming surfing uh, villages. But back at Mandarina, it's 650 acres. So really a destination onto itself and really unlike anything you've experienced in Mexico. We're actually on the same latitude as Hawaii. So very similar climate and similar color of water there. Um, what's special to note is that this really immerses you into nature. It's kind of like the landscape of Southeast Asia with the jungle and the mountains meeting the warm tropical beaches. So our accommodations here will do that. They'll immerse you into nature there's even a few categories that are treehouse villas. So those are 40 feet above the ground with a private plunge pool. We still have availability or festive, and we do have a stay four, pay three promotion going on for non-festive periods. So uh, do keep this in mind, there are new, new uh, flights from Newark. Uh, so one of the first nonstop options from uh, the New York area into Puerto Vallarta. We're very excited about this property and this would be um, 